Hey kids, Madison here. Come along with me on a coffee farm adventure. The best coffee in the world comes from a place called Kana. That's in Hawaii. This is Sam, and she's going to teach us all about coffee. All right, so you are standing on the mountain of Hualalai, and this volcano is named that because my Hawaiian people, and our ancestors, would call it the shy one because the cloud cover always builds over from this mountain from thermal clouds building up from heat from the ocean. Hawaii has a lot of volcanoes. So Kona and where we're at is almost always cloudy in the afternoon. Now if you look in the distance, it's actually a cluster of white shapes. That's the harbor. So this is a fishing village and has been for thousands of years. Uh, thousands of years. Our elevation right now is 3,200 feet and we are the highest coffee farm in the United States. We are so high up, we're in a cloud forest. Sam took us on a 4 by 4 for a tour around the farm. The farm is so beautiful. And they even have some pet sheep. What a fun place for a kid to explore. There were many tropical plants and flowers around the farm. Coffee grows on trees and it produces cherries. We wanted to help harvest the coffee. There's one coffee family that we feature here called Arabica. It's all from Ethiopia. And goats were found eating this fruit wild in the kingdom of Kaffa, 800 CE. That's why we call it coffee from the kingdom of Kaffa. And then you can see the red ones are ripe. The green ones are not ripe yet. And you can see it's ripening in stages. Yeah. So we're going to have you pick some cherry and we want to leave the stems on because that stem turns into next year's harvest. In Hawaiian, we call coffee kanaka kope, Hawaiian coffee. How do you know when coffee is ripe? Coffee turns a brilliant red color and coffee is a cherry. It's in the same family as stone fruit, so we do call it cherries. So they should be a beautiful cherry red and you can hand pick it by twisting it gently, leave the stem on and that is a full coffee ready to be picked. Inside the cherries are coffee beans. We love looking for the bright red cherries and picking them. Look how beautiful the cherries are. Then it was time to take our cherries to be processed. First, we dumped out the big bag of cherries. Look how many we picked. The cherries were pushed down a slide. So when we have fresh picked cherry, we know it's dumped right above, and then we dump it into this floating tank. The floaters are bad, but the sinkers are good. Can any of you tell me why? Because of the insects? Yes. If coffee is infested with insects, it'll float to the top, which means it's already bad. And then the sinkers at the bottom soften in water, and then it's here that the fruit is going to be pulped, and then the skins are drawn all the way into that big bin where we can use it as fertilizer. They went into a big tank of water. Bad ones float, good ones sink. Sometimes little bugs get inside the coffee beans and they eat them. Nobody wants to eat those ones, the bad ones float. The skins needed to be separated from the beans inside. They do that with some really cool machines. All the skin and extra stuff gets recycled. It becomes fertilizer. Next, the beans get put into another tank of water. Before they're roasted, coffee beans are green. We loved watching the whole process. But it's a dirty job. Once mm -hmm. that is the seeds dissolving the sugary membrane. That's what you want. Yes. In that water, the seeds dissolve the membrane. When it was down to just the beans, they needed it to be dry. They came shooting out of the tube. laid out the beans on a drying deck. 
The beans need to sit there for one to two weeks before they are ready. They get to dry here, and when it dries for one to two weeks, its next layer is a paper jacket called parchment. We can take off that jacket, and underneath it is a little white shirt called silver skin. You can actually rub it off with your fingernails, too. And under that is raw green coffee. See that? You guys want to help me open them up? Yeah. Every day, the coffee farmers have to rake out the beans so they dry evenly. We love that part. All right, girls, what you're touching is fully dried parchment. So once the seeds come out of the pulper and the layer of cherry is removed, we dry it for one to two weeks on the decks, and then it's at 10 to 12% moisture, which is what you're handling right now. This is how coffee can be stored for years. At this dry point, this is how countries can backstock coffee for up to seven years with this shell on. We can take off this shell and look underneath. You girls can open it for me. Eventually, the coffee beans reach a dry point. Take off that paper jacket, take off that paper thin shirt underneath, and that's raw green seeds. Sometimes people need coffee right now. We don't have time to wait two weeks. When that happens, they use huge dryers to dry them quickly. So we can use these dryers to dock the coffee seeds in, and it dries in a matter of 48 hours with low heat, just like our clothes, and then we can get it fresh and ready to roast. Yeah, so coffee can be picked and ready in 48 hours. parchment bag, that big sack of a thousand pounds of dried coffee. Yeah. 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 So that paper jacket needs to come off. How do we do it? We take a thousand pounds, we dump it in, and then the elevator takes it to the hauler, grates it off like cheese. It grates it off like cheese. <laughs> How funny. And that is a little sample of what it looks like. We'll take off that paper jacket. We gotta remove any layers we miss. Extra thorough, we toss the seeds in a polisher. So think of it like stones in a river. Toss them against each other, they'll polish off any layers they miss, and then that's all fertilizer on the farm. Cool, right? Yeah. That can all be repurposed, but now the layers are gone. We need to sort coffee by size. Do you remember how many sizes are on a coffee tree? Six. Seven. Very good. Come on this way. Coffee, sorted by size, shakes out to different bags based on screens. So we call this machine screener. Greener sorts coffee beans by size. And up until the 1960s, men and women from countries like Japan, Korea, China, as well as the Philippines and Hawaiians, we used to pan it like gold, shaking out each size to a different screen. They used to do this by hand? I'm glad I live in a time where machines do this kind of stuff. Take the seeds by one bag, dump it, High end, low end. Shake it back and forth really hard like a bag of chips. Crumbs go down to the bottom. And that's the lowest quality coffee. The bigger, heavier seeds stay at the top. That's all the caffeine and sugar. That's why there's a $50 bag of coffee and a $5 bag of coffee. <laughs> the sorter machine fries the highest quality of beans. The heavier the bean is, the more flavor it has. Now you look at this bag. Do you see the black ones? The white ones? The white ones are underripe, the black ones are overripe. By eye, I used to hand pick it out, and it took me hours. Doing this by hand would take a long time. This machine is so much faster than me. It scans the seeds, and it sends any ones that are not green off with a bolt of air, because it needs to refract green light into the camera. So it scans it, knocks it off, and sends it to that brown bag right at the end. This allows us to find only the green the green seeds, which were the ripe cherries. And that's going to be the freshest and yummiest tasting coffee. From the color, we can see if it was underripe, just right, or overripe. Can you believe all the steps it takes to make coffee? After all that work, I had to try some. Kids don't usually drink coffee, but I had to have a little sip. From 
bean to cup. This is good stuff. Mmm, cone of coffee. Delish. Best coffee in the world? Right here. Hey girls, did you have a good time? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today on our coffee farm adventure. We want to say a big mahalo from Mountain Thunder Coffee Farm, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah. 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 Hello. Mahalo. Hello. Well, ole it was no trouble for us. <laughs> <laughs>